Hello again and welcome to Tips with Andrew. I am Andrew Sapiano and thank you for joining me on this wonderful Thursday afternoon. I hope you guys are having an awesome week so far, ready for the weekend. I know I am. I'm, ex I'm super excited for this weekend, every weekend. Let's, get, let's finish off the week strong, ready to rock into the weekend. Today, actually leading on to the end of the week theme, I guess you will, um, it's really easy to get overwhelmed um, at this point in time because uh, you know the weekend's coming and you've been doing this, that, all day, every day, and so especially this time of year, uh, the Christmas season, the holiday season, stuff like that, you've got uh, a, a lot more going on than at any other point in the year. So it's easy to let the, um, you know, the hustle and bustle of everyday life sort of get in the way of really what needs to get done and what you, what, what is priority to get done versus just having a laundry list of things to do. Um, so for me, I'm here to share some tips that help keep me focused, um, concentrated, keep me on the task at hand, and uh, I want to share them with you. Hopefully they help. Hopefully you get some value out of this. Tip number one is to make a list and prioritize what needs to get done. Me, I never was a list maker. I never really cared to make lists. I never knew about the benefits of making lists. Tina, on the other hand, loves lists. She has 37 lists on the go at any point in time. It's unbelievable the amount of lists for lists for lists that need not, they don't need to get done, but it's amazing how much more beneficial it is to have everything that you need written down. I read a quote one day that said, um, or the other day that said, don't trust your memory, write it down. And that's perfect because if you're, if, if you're anything like me, by the time you go to write something down that you were really thought was cool to write down, um, you've forgotten most of it or you've forgotten the, uh, you know, the most important part and you're kind of just gisting it together, you know, okay, I was here and then this happened and yeah, something else like that. Write stuff down. Don't trust your memory. Your memory has a way of misconstruing things um, so that you don't actually know what your what, what actually happened, your mind just puts together a story of what it sh thinks it should have happened or what you would expect to happen. Your brain's actually really cool like that. Um, so make a list and then of the list, so you got your list, okay? Now you want to prioritize exactly what needs to be done at the top. Maybe put uh, numbers on it, number one, um, you know, maybe Roman numerals, I don't know, letters, whatever, uh, whatever helps you uh, know what needs to be done at the top of the list. What that's what needs to get done, and then everything else is sort of um, you know a, a luxury if it gets done, but it's not so much skin off your back if it doesn't get done. A lot of times, the stuff that it makes you very uncomfortable is the stuff that needs to get done, which is why it normally doesn't get done. It's so much easier to do things that you're comfortable with, i.e., sit on the couch, watch TV. For me, fantasy football. It's that season, it's that time of year, so there's a lot of things that, um, you know, that, that get in the way of what actually needs to be done. So make a list, and then make a list for your list. I'm telling you, if you've got 13 lists on the go, it's not a lot. <laughs> you need it and, it, and it'll make it more beneficial for you. Um, that, that was one of the tips, that actually, that, that really helped me was making a list. Um, Tina was drilling that into me for years on years, and I never really cared to do it. But once I started doing it, it's amazing how much it's amazing how much you think is going on in your life or that you need to get done until you start writing it down. And then you're like, okay, well, this needs to get done, and then this needs to get done. And now by the, the third or fourth point, you're like, all right, well, I guess I don't really need to do anything else out. But in your mind, it seemed like there was a whole bunch of things going on, um, and and you you were you had a list, a million things long to do. When it turns out your list is only three or four things long to do, they're just um, they're just tasks that make you uncomfortable. So that's why you don't um, you don't put them at the forefront of your thought to have them get done. Tip number two is to go along with your list making is to time block. 
definitely time block. This was a huge key for me because you have no idea. One, one of the more beneficial things than anything is to set an alarm on your phone or your timer or whatever you can set an alarm for a timer. Um, give yourself, I, you know what needs to be done in tasks, right? So if you need to give yourself half an hour, give yourself half an hour, but that's it. Once that half an hour is done, that's it. If you need an hour, once that hour is done, that's it. No more with that task for the day. What that does more than anything is it makes your brain know that this is how fast you need this to be done. You don't have all day to just uh, pitter-patter around on this task. You need it to be done in this specific amount of time, i.e. laundry. Um, If folding laundry takes you an hour but you only have half an hour, you do half an hour and then you stop. And then at that point, the next time you go to do laundry, your brain's going to know that you only have half an hour. So once the half an hour is up, you're going to find A, that you're done, uh, that you're, you know, done, and B, that you've gotten more accomplished because your brain knows that you only have this amount of time to be done. So you're, you're put, it's putting all its energy and, um, uh, um, I guess energy <laughs> into uh, doing that one task. Versus trying to think of, you know, 700 other things that you need to get done. Um, it, it'll just help you focus more. And then when you, and then time block everything that needs to happen in the day. So if, so if you need to work, you need to time block work. If you need to shower, you need to time block shower. If you need to do dishes, time block dishes. If you need to eat, time block eating. Um, if you need to, actually this is, it leads into my next one, take breaks. Schedule yourself to take breaks. To, so once you get your time blocking down, everything into little bits of time blocks, because you have 24 hours in the day, and you know what needs to be done, so you condense it all down into time blocks. I have this much amount of time for this, I need to go to work for 8 hours, so that's you know this much amount of time, I have you know an hour to cook, that's this much amount of time, I have 30 minutes to do dishes, which is you know, and you time block it, all up and down your, your day, and then that way, once you write it down and you get it all on paper, and all on a, on a, uh, like a calendar, that's when you know, that's when you'll know exactly what needs to be done, exactly how much time you have to do it, and then you set an alarm for that amount of time, and then when you're done, The next time you go back to do that, you'll find you get more done in less time because your brain knows that that's the time that it needs to focus on that specific task. That was huge for me. Making a list, time blocking is huge for me. The next one that I was talking about is take breaks. Definitely, definitely, definitely take breaks. You need, you are not a machine. You are not a robot. You are not programmed to be going all day, every day, Um, at a million miles a minute. What you are programmed to do is do a little bit for a lot of periods of time. So you do a little bit, then you schedule a break. So you do your work, then you schedule a break, then you do your dishes, for example, then you schedule a break. Then you do the laundry and you're, 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 you're time blocking and you're scheduling everything in your life. That way it makes it so much easier for you to know exactly what needs to be done at exactly the points of time that it needs to be done during the day. You're not a robot, but you are a robot in the sense that you, wait, you, you need to sleep and you need to eat and you probably need to work to, to earn an income. So those three things right there need to be time blocked accordingly. They, you, and more often than not, I know for me personally, I work um, rotating shifts. So for me, every two weeks is different schedule, but more often than not, people work a straight shift. So you know that you're working, going to work every day from this time to this time. You know that you need to go to sleep roughly, give or take, from this time to this time. <clears throat> you're going to need to eat at a certain point in those days. You're going to need to shower at a certain point in those days. That's the stuff where you need to figure out what, um, what your schedule looks like and then time block into those uh, scenarios. But more than more beneficial than anything is you need to schedule yourself a break. At least 10 minutes every hour. At least, at least, yeah, I think it's five minutes every hour that you need. But at least 10 minutes a break is that you need um, just so that you give yourself a chance to relax, to rewind. And, not, and I'm not talking about take a break to go and do another task. I'm talking about taking a break just for yourself. Just to sit there, you know, maybe put a face mask on. Um, I don't know if you wanted to sit and take a bubble bath 
as your break, that's that's totally perfect. I, you know, anything you can do to sort of take your mind, just not only to take your mind off it, but you want to just break the pattern. Because once you're once you're going for a long period of time, I know myself personally. Once I'm going on a certain task for for a long period of time, I just I find myself um, you you don't really come to conclusions that you're looking to get to, and you don't always uh, you you find yourself arguing with yourself over what uh, need what what you should be continually doing. Um, but when you take a break. You go and you do exactly what you what you think you need to do. Then you take a break. Then you come back and you've seen what you've done. So now you know exactly what you need to do, and you knew, and you know exactly how you need to tackle it. You know exactly the angle you need to come at it from, and then that way you'll be able to you'll be able to bang it off real quick, and you'll have an excellent amount of work to show for it. Tip number four is to eat right. This is something that the majority of people struggle with. I don't know an exact number. I do know the number is one in almost every two people in America are are considered obese. Um, So that tells me right away that at least 30-40% of people are not eating properly. And what that does, your body needs a certain amount of nutrition. I believe it was something like 14 servings of fruits and vegetables every day. Now let's get real here. That's probably not realistic for the majority of people some people for sure heck yeah they'll do that and they enjoy doing that a lot of people couldn't really be bothered i i know myself included if i was told that i had to eat 14 servings of fruits and vegetables every day wow (laughs) what else am i doing in the day that's what i want to know really let's get real here um but that's what but you need to do what you can with what you've got so if you're always going out and you're eating out and you're eating out, you're eating, you know, takeout, fast food and never having a home cooked meal, that's easy right away. Right away you want to switch to at least one home cooked meal. One thing I, I, I read about fr- fruits and vegetables is that if you just start with one piece of broccoli, just one piece of broccoli, that's all you need to start with. And that's a drastic change in your, in your, uh, um, in your, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? In routine, your your uh, in your nutrition routine. That's the word I'm looking for. And fun fact about broccoli: it's got more protein in it than steak. It's crazy per serving. Um, so that's what I find that that's what I find beneficial more than anything is just to add a couple things in there. Now, I mean, I get I get really into moods where. Um, you know, I know it needs to be done, so I will pack on a whole plate of vegetables or, you know, I'm eating the quinoa and the, and the couscous instead of the rice and, and all that all that stuff that needs to happen and the, and the, and the fruit smoothies and, and it happens. It does. It go, I go through phases and I really rock it out with that and I, you know, I, I, I know it needs to be done and as gross as it is, I keep doing it because I know it needs to be done. But then, obviously, that comes to it. A, a, I find... <laughs> motivation wears thin and you know you see those commercials for food and all of a sudden you know you've got McDonald's is ca- calling your name right there and 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 all of a sudden A&W looks good and, and all those other fun stuff but um and and I'm not saying that you need to do that you need to be um you know a uh you know a, a nutrition nut all the time but you need to be conscious of what you're putting in your body because your body needs specific um, vitamins and minerals and nutrients to be able to perform at an optimum level. So if you're only putting garbage junk food in your body, then that's the way that your body's going to perform. It's going to perform garbage junk food. It's going to perform garbage and junk. But if you're putting the, the proper nutri- nutrients, nutrition, minerals, vitamins into your body, um, then your body's definitely going to be able to perform at an optimum level. Uh, side tip, multivitamin. Everybody should be taking a multivitamin. Um, it's only going to be more beneficial. It allows your body to absorb uh, all the vitamins and minerals from the food and so that it doesn't just pass through your digestive tract and you end up excreting it later. That's a cool tip. Number five is essential oils. Uh, essential oils for me have helped more than anything Um, I don't see a moment in time where I don't use essential oils and I love that the, I love the way that they make 
that they instantaneously bring me back into a, you know, bring me back to focus. They uplift me. They invigorate me. Uh, and and they and they they leave me wanting to keep going. That's that's the best part that I find more than anything. My favorite oil more than anything is oh no it isn't. <laughs> it's actually become basil. Basil for me is amazing. I love everything about it. I never even thought about it anything more than a spice for you know your pasta. And because I love basil, everywhere I go, everybody says that I smell like a pizza. Which is, which is funny because it doesn't actually smell like the basil hurt. But basil is actually really good um, as a stimulant. So what it does is it actually raises the endorphin levels in, your, uh, in the limbic system in your brain to perform at an optimal level. And it actually allows you to, to, uh, you know, to perform better to, or to perform mundane tasks better and more uh, efficiently because it's, it's actually a natural stimulant. I love that about it. Peppermint is great. I believe peppermint has 150 different uses. So for focus and concentration, of course, um, I love this one. I love everything about it. I love it for... And the, actually, the best part about peppermint is if you are in school or you have children that are in school, um, you study for a test and you inhale peppermint. Then when you go time to take the test, you inhale peppermint. And then what happens is it brings back the memories in your brain of the times that you were studying. And it actually re-allows you to know exactly what you were studying be based off the way that the peppermint works with the chemicals in your brain to, and, and, and that is huge. That's powerful, powerful. Studying for a test, you smell peppermint and then you're basically cheating. Huge, I love it. Another oil that actually I found was really, um, it, it, was, it was weird in the sense that I wouldn't actually consider this one for focus, but it makes sense, tangerine. Tangerine is my favorite citrus oil. That's why I picked tangerine. But citrus oils in general are amazing because what happens when you lose focus, you lose concentration, a lot of times you're just tired and you're just down and you're just beat and that's it. Citrus oils, they have a natural uplifting ability. So when you're uplifted and you're invigorated, you automatically um, focus better and you have more concentration. So citrus oils are amazing for that. I never even thought about it until I read about it a little bit ago. Tangerine is my favorite. I love tangerine. I love everything about tangerine. It, it like and it doesn't even have that overpowering orange smell that you would get from a tangerine. It's I love using this in my water. I love using this in my smoothie. I love using it in my coffee. I love everything about it. Um, everybody loves different citrus oils and everybody's drawn to different citrus oils. I know, for example, Tina loves green mandarin and I love tangerine. So right there, two different ones. Citrus oils, you'll find a citrus oil that you love and then you can use that one to uplift and invigorate you. That's all I got for you for today. My five tips for helping with focus and concentration. Number one, make a list and prioritize what needs to be done on that list. Number two is to time block specific activities. Number three is to take breaks. Make sure you're taking breaks. Allow yourself to relax and restore. Number six, or number four, sorry, is to eat right. Make sure you're getting that proper vitamin and nutrition uh, into your body that you need. Pro tip for that, multivitamin all day, every day. Uh, and then number five is essential oils. Essential oils for me are perfect for every situation that you can come up with in life. That's all I got for you for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I very much appreciate you. I hope you found some value in this. Feel free to share this with your friends or your family, perhaps a teammate that you feel needs to hear this. Um, if you'd like to learn more about essential oils or some of these cool things that I talk about, feel free to drop me a comment, send me a message, and uh, we'll get you rocking and rolling. Thank you so much for joining me. You guys have a wonderful Thursday afternoon and evening, and I look forward to talking to you again. Bye for now.